Yep. So this is happening. This is Lizcapism. Normally we make historically inspired things on this channel, but my dog needed a winter coat. I wanted to make a Halloween costume for my dog and that's just where we're at. Okay, so in all honesty, I did actually try to do a little bit of research for this video to see if there was any kind of historical precedent for dogs and clothing. But unfortunately, not only are there extremely limited resources that are publicly available, but also the resources that are publicly available mostly say that they either dress them in extra fancy collars or as humans. And don't get me wrong, I'm all about making a waistcoat for my dog. 100% I will be doing that in the future. That sounds like a hoot. I just couldn't think of anything that was like particularly interesting or inspiring in terms of like historical stuff. The first thing that I came upon in my own head before any of that really, you know, sparked anything. Don't know if anybody else who grew up dressing in costumes for things like Halloween or plays or whatever has this experience, but I know a couple of people for whom this is true, there is one costume from your childhood that is just the costume. Doesn't matter how cheap or expensive, it was the costume. And this is that costume for me. And it was a dinosaur costume. I have next to no memory of this thing other than those like, they're almost like physical memories. Like I don't, I don't even think I've seen any pictures of me in them. Just have this like vague memory of what this costume was. I'm remembering this as like a hood I can't remember if it was like a onesie or if it was just like like a cape type thing with a tail. Like, do, do you remember what the kind of layout of this was in terms of like how I would wear it? I remember it more as full costume rather than cape. And I do remember the hood and the spikes going all the way down your back and then a tail. I'm remembering like it was like a grayish color, almost purple, kind of in that blue, gray, purple mix. And I think spikes were pink. Yeah, that sounds right. That sounds right. That that's that's tracking with my memory. Sort of like a dusty pink though, right? Like not like hot pink. No, no, exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. A, a paler pink. So that was like three ages three to five ish, we're thinking. Like I think that one was probably a very practical costume also for a three to five year old to have, because I imagine that that one held up pretty well to having weather appropriate gear underneath, you know, <laughs> like the winter coat. That's always a, a barrier for poor poor Canadian kids who have to who have to walk around in like parkas and their house. Halloween costumes, so. And if you make a costume that will go over a snowsuit, you run the risk of having a beautiful, beautiful fall day and <laughs> this child not needing a snowsuit. And yeah. <laughs> having a, a suit that's a costume that's way too big for them. Yeah, yeah. So this is a... This seemed like a really good compromise where it could kind of go both ways. I We talked about this previously, but there's no pictures of this costume. And for half a second, I was convinced that I had like made it up or seen it on someone else and told myself that it was a, that it was a costume that I had. I'm glad that it's, I'm glad that it's real. <laughs> that I'm not it's just not making real. stuff up. Real. Oh, that's no. awesome. I decided to take it a little bit further. And instead of making it a dinosaur costume, I decided to make it a dragon costume. Dragons and I go way back. My mother is obsessed with dragons. She collects dragons in figurines and paintings and pictures, uh, dragon themed things. She has dragon stuffed animals. She has stationery and books and what have you. Like I grew up with dragons. And so it's an absolute of course to me to make dragon themed things whenever I can. I've been, I've been telling the internet about your dragon collection in the context of this video. So I, I thought that that would be good context to explain why uh, why a dragon was the uh, was was a, was a good apt choice for. I probably spent. I'm not sure. I probably spent a bit of time. Wouldn't this be a great costume for yeah. you? <laughs> yeah, totally. That's what we're doing. Um, this is probably going to be a pretty quick video, which is one of the other reasons that I've decided to do it. I was going to just have my Agatha Christie video be my Halloween video and leave it there. I don't know, I got bitten by the productivity bug this week or something, and I was just desperate to make this video because it sounded so much fun. And so my plan is to create a sort of rough shell based on an actual dog coat pattern, which I managed to get at a uh, estate sale a couple years ago. Um, it, all the dogs on here are small, but there is a size that is appropriate for rosy sized dogs. So I'm going to cut those pattern pieces out. And my plan is to follow the pattern as closely as possible until it comes to the trim and decorations that I will essentially be making an actual dog coat, but then adding components on top of it. I'm not creating a pattern from scratch and I am not 
doing any fundamental changes to the pattern that will make it less of a coat, because I think that does need to still be its primary function. That's the plan. It's just me goofing around, trying to have some fun. I think it's going to be really cool to see. I'll talk to you later. Okay, so now we're at the point where I can't do any more assembling until I've got the dragony components. So I'm gonna show you quickly what I did for those. Because I'm kind of doing this on the fly, I have no idea if this is going to work out. I think most of it will hold water, so we'll see. I decided that the two main things that I can sew directly onto the coat that can live on the coat, regardless of whether it's a costume or a coat, are the spines along the back and on the hood. And then the other thing that I thought would be really fun would be teeth across the front of the hood. So for the back spines, I've got this little number where I took the model of one spine and then like duplicated it across an entire strip. And then this little back piece is meant to be the, uh, the very end of it. And that'll get put into the back seam. Uh, the pattern that I cut out doesn't actually have a back seam. The pattern that I cut out is a whole back piece that you can cut just in one piece. So what I did was I folded the pattern in half. And then when I laid it out on my fabric, I just added an inch onto the edge and then cut two pieces as opposed to one whole piece. That way I have a one inch seam allowance to play with in order to kind of figure out how best the spines will slide in there. And then I'll put it in as if it's piping, but it's gonna be like really, really prominent piping that like sticks out all of the way. I'll see how that goes. I think it should work pretty well. So I've got this with the black flannel and the straps that'll go underneath her belly. And I put some quilted batting on the inside to give it that like extra layer of warmth. And then I'm going to have that be like the one whole bottom lining piece. So this will be what goes against her skin. And this will be what uh, keeps her cozy, cozy warm. Uh, we're gonna go move on to cutting out the pieces of the spines and the teeth. I'm gonna go get back to work and we're gonna make some dragon scales.
I often kind of chastise myself for making these little projects because sometimes in my head I think that I'm wasting valuable resources uh, or like supplies or whatever. And uh, yeah, it, it's that's a silly reason not to do something. It's it, supplies are supplies and a historical costume for me is no more or less silly, frankly, than a costume for my dog. But in the grand scheme of things, it's still something that bothers me. So I have to say I'm a tiny bit gratified at the fact that I have kept every single little bit of scrap boning that I have used or cut in the last two years. And um, I am feeling extremely validated that now they're going to be able to be used for my dog's dragon wings. You know, just those little things. It's the little things, you know. So the wireframe that I made with the homemade jig uh, for the wing pattern uh, I've taken one of those and I've slid it between two pieces of fabric and then uh, with pins secured the fabric so that I could sort of very carefully top stitch around the outline and then some of the in uh, inside so that the wire would sort of be roughly uh, in place. I'm going to put a little bit of boning so that it kind of holds itself up a little bit better and we'll see uh, how that goes. Originally my plan was to have the green cotton fabric that I had used with the rest of the costume to be on the outside, but I forgot that with the top stitching I wasn't going to be turning it inside out, but rather that I was just going to be adding binding around the outside once I'd cut it all out. Yeah, we're just gonna have to deal with the fact that these are the wings. It snowed last night, which is a weird form of kismet. Sorry for all of the people who are gonna have to trick or treat in the snow tomorrow, but it does mean that we get a nice little trial run for this dog costume slash winter coat. So we're gonna film some footage out here in the lovely snow. <laughs> Come here, dragon. Spin. Hi, yeah. <laughs> okay. And back. This way. <laughs> okay. 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 You know what you get? You get full cookie, because you've been so good, you get whole cookie. Whole cookie. A good girl. Okay, let's go. 